Angie. Imagine a life where all you've known is manipulation, greed, and betrayal. Seeing countless lives lost to the actions of those you choose to associate with, leading you to believe the only path to success is following in their footsteps. Then once you realize the error of your ways, it's too late for atonement. Or if there is atonement, what will it cost you? Today we look at two of those stories from the critically acclaimed series, The Wire and Snowfall. The story begins with D'Angelo Boxdale, a mid-level drug dealer in the Boxdale organization, run by his uncle Avon Boxdale, his mother Brianna Boxdale, and the family's close associate, Stringer Bell. D'Angelo has a talent for moving weight, and eventually he's given control of an entire high-rise. Then one day he makes a careless mistake that results in the death of an innocent bystander, and he lucks into getting off a murder charge. How say you to the charge of murder in the first degree? Not guilty. How say you to the charge of murder in the second degree? Not guilty. Yeah! Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Be seated. Be seated. You, Daddy. Uh huh. Yeah! Right. Order. Yes, you. Yeah. At least you made him work for it. Be seated. The jury is to be thanked for its services in this case. Deputies will return Defendant Barksdale to pretrial for processing prior to his release. But in the meantime, his consciousness is seared. He's realizing the error of the ways of his family. After the murder of his friend Wallace, it leads him to doubting if he wants to be a part of this game. So in an act of attempted redemption, he goes to the police, giving them names to a case they were trying to solve. And while giving the police several names, he himself has to spend time behind bars alongside his uncle. And while in prison, his family tries talking to him, trying to bring him back onto their side. But his mind is made up. He wants to atone for all his sins and his evil doing until... All right, man. Give me a minute. Let me finish up right here real quick. And I'll go and get one for you. Story begins with Leon, a ruthless young gangster with a temper that more often than not lands him in trouble. Even after being shown the game by his friend Franklin Saint, as he grows in his name in the streets, gaining more and more enemies, his temper and impulsive behavior gets checked. You know, I got all this shit hanging over my head, but you off trying to start a war with our partners. The nigga diss me every time I see him. Acting like he the one in charge and shit. In Compton, he is the one. You lose. Every time you bite with that nigga, and I'm the one that pays for it. And you gonna get off his corners? You gonna leave his people be? Or you the one that's gonna find yourself a new plug? You don't mean that shit? The fuck I don't. I built this shit. Me. Brick by brick. And I'll be damned if I let you tear it down just because you don't like the way another nigga talk. But that still didn't put an end to his impulsive behavior. While Lou wouldn't hit on a rival gang's leader, he ends up coming to find out he killed a daughter instead. After this crucial mistake, it leads Leon to regret his path in this life. In need of a break from this life, he and his future wife Wanda leave to Ghana for a year. After returning home to try and make peace in this worsened situation, Leon has to try to save his community, even at the cost of his marriage.
I'm going back to Ghana. I got enough money for a one-way ticket, and I'll figure out the rest when I get there. Your money, stop. Time. You're my wife, and this is your money, too. We'll get you to Ghana so you can start a new life. But once he came to the realization he can't save everybody, he settles on saving those he can change while his friends get lost.